Constantine Brancusi was born in Habitsa, Romania on February 19, 1876 and died March 16, 1957 in Paris, France. His notable works are The Endless Column, 1938, Torso of a Young Man, 1917 to 1922, Bird in Space, 1919, and many more. His career began in France as a Romanian sculptor, painter, and photographer. As a child growing up, he showed great talent in carving objects out of wood. By the time Brancusi turned 18, he was entered, entered in Craiova School of Arts and Crafts, where he pursued in his love for woodworking and graduated in 1898. After school, he enrolled in the Bucharest School of Fine Arts, where he received academic training in sculpture. Brancusi's Bird in Space was first owned by American patron John Quinn, who saw the creation of the art piece. The art piece mainly focused on the animal's movements, instead of adding little details. Details such as the wings and feathers were not added, and mostly emphasizing on the elongated swell of the body. Picture a bird as it is just about to take flight. The first thing you probably imagine is its wings stretching out. Instead of focusing on the details, Take away the wings, the feathers, the head of the bird, and the feet. Just think of the motion of the body. This is what Constantine Brancusi was accomplishing, the bird in space. Examples of Constantine Brancusi's work also include The Kiss, 1916, Sleeping News, 1909 to 1910, Endless Column, 1918, The Sorcerers, 1916 to 1924, Fish, 1926, Mademoiselle Pauline, 1913, Princess X, 1916, and Golden Bird, 1920. In 1926, Birding Space was the subject of a court battle of its taxation by North Customs. In October 1926, the piece of art arrived in the New York Harbor along with others via the steamship Paris. Works of art aren't subject to custom duties, but customs refused to believe that the tall, thin metal was art. They imposed the 40% tax for metal objects. Under pressure, the sculpture was released under the label of kitchen utensils until a decision could be reached. In 1928, judges Young and Wright decided in favor of the artist. On January 28, 1920, Bacusi exhibited the Princess X in Paris. It's unsure whether Picasso or Matisse shouted, here it is, the phallus, as they viewed the piece. The organizers forced Bacusi to remove the sculpture being that the French minister was going to be escorted through the ex exhibition. Mercusi stated, I felt like someone has been marked senseless in the dark. Francusi argues that the work qualified for extension from doing on the ground that is professional production of a sculptor which is an original and not an article of utility under the Tariff Act 1922. Therefore, in February 1927, a federal customs appraiser, F.J.H. Craig, explained his ruling. Several men in the art world were asked to express their opinions for the government. One of them told us, if that's art, hereafter I'm a bricklayer. Another said, dots and dashes are artistic as Brancusi's work. In general, it was their opinion that Brancusi left too much to the imagination. The following month, Brancusi v. United States was filed, was filed to appeal to the court. Brancusi had challenged the definition of a work of art that the Olivari case established 10 years ago. This case defines sculptures as a work of art only if they were chiseled and carved imitations of a natural object, mainly in the human form, that is represented in true proportions. So then the judge had questioned Edward's action, the photographer who originally employed the works of art. Edward was questioned as follow. Judge Wake, what do you call this? Stai Chen, I use the same term the sculptor did. Wazoo, a bird. 
Judge Wade, what makes you call it a bird? Does it look like a bird to you? Stark Chen, it, it does not look like a bird, but I feel that it is a bird. It is characterized by the artist as a bird. Judge Young, if you saw a bird in the forest, would you not take a shot at it? Stark Chen, no, Your Honor. An art critic named Frank County shows after being called to question was asked how it would lead him to believe it was a bird. Frank said it has a suggestion of flight, grace, aspiration, vigor, coupled with the speed and the spirit of strength, potency, and beauty just as a bird does. But just the name, the title of this work, why really, it does not mean much. The court made their decision in 1928 after going back and forth in a passionate debate. Drafted by Judge Wade, the court held, The object not under consideration is beautiful and symmetrical in an outline. While some difficulty might be encountered and associated with it with a bird, it is nevertheless pleasing to look at and highly ornamental. And as we hold under the evidence that it is an original projection of a professional sculpture, sculptor, and is in fact a piece of a sculpture and a work of art according to the authorities above referred to, we sustain the process and find that it is entitled to free entry. From the judge's ruling or decision, it was not only a victory for Bercuzzi, but for Adrian Gradar too, by, by the overruling of the olive body requirement. This led to the judges being aware of the new school's idea and their influence upon the art world to be considered. Bercuzzi was sent a copy of the ruling, and the court had appended to it a photograph of the bird. This honor the court of law had highly bestowed to an artist. Also, Art also Art News ran an article called Bracuzzi is an Artist. The article had said how gratifying it was because the old school's bitter prejudice and crass ignorance did not always prevail modernists. Though the Bracuzzi case took away the requirement of vigorous sculptures, to, it still took years for custom laws to take away the unreasonable restrictions on free and forth of artwork. In 1931, Tapestries were seen as beautiful because they were made of wool. In 1971, six car door, door panels designed for a church were beautiful because they were utility. It wasn't until 61 years later that the harmonized terror schedule of 1989 was allowed free entry to work both artistic and functional.